Hey guys, Adam Surfing Dog Training. Just quickly, I want to talk about the dangerous advice that false free anti-correction dog trainers give. Okay, we're going to go over a couple of points really quickly. Went to a client's house oh, the other day and the dog was displaying all the typical bratty dog behaviours. Okay, uh, mouthing, jumping up, uh, amongst other things. So, I'm a bit tired this morning, guys. So, the first thing I want to address is their method to stopping dogs that mouth. Okay, so they tell you to never punish the dog, never correct the dog. If the dog's putting his mouth on you, do a high pitched yelp like your dog, like your one of their little mates, which is fucking insane. Uh, to see if the pup will let go. The other thing is they tell you to redirect it with a treat. Now, dogs are very clever, so if the dog puts his mouth on you, you go, ah, ah, dog, let's go, you give it a treat, or you die and distract it with a toy instead to give it something else to bite. What happens is you're effectively conditioning the dog that every time it sticks its mouth on you, it's going to get a treat, and it won't take the dog long to figure that out. Okay? Uh, the other one, jumping up, they tell you to turn your back on the dog, ask the dog for an alternative behaviour, sit, etc etc same thing dog jumps up you then ask it to sit you give it a treat you rewarded the dog for sitting you didn't do anything to stop the jumping up dog jumps up you ask it to sit you give it a treat eventually the dog learns if i jump up go into a sit i get a treat okay so again you're conditioning the dog to jump up uh in order to get a treat counter surfing Another one, they tell you to ask your dog to sit, call your dog away from the counter, give it a reward. Teach the dog that there's an alternative better behaviour. Again, you condition the dog every time it jumps up at the counter, you're going to call the dog and give it a treat. It's not counter surfing, but a similar scenario is where you had a client a little while ago who had had a positive trainer. And the dog decided to come in my garden, decided he wanted to do a spot of gardening, dig up all the, all the branches and tree stumps and uh, dog was having a whale of a time unfortunately i didn't order a gardener so the dog literally is grabbing hold of the branches tugging on them for its life having a whale of a time so the only calls the dog dog comes running over she goes yes gives the dog a treat dog goes back over to the branches she calls the dog back to her yes gives the dog a treat now third time dog went back to the branches and again this is what i mean you're actually teaching the dog to continue this behavior by going down this route with these fairy tale dog trainers the third time the dog went back over to the branch it actually stopped turned back and looked at the owner waiting for the owner to call it yeah it's learning every time i went over here and started doing this you're going to call me so now the dog's anticipating this is what's going to get you a treat you're conditioning the dog to continue that behavior yeah it there's so many they go and so many silly behaviours that dogs do, like bratty behaviours, right? ones that you just typically get called for because you only can't control it. And of course, Dale often would have gone to puppy classes and been given this shit advice or they would have had a positive trainer in because they're everywhere. They're like the plague, they're everywhere. Uh, and of course, what happens is eventually when they're trying this for months and months and months and nothing's improving, then they call a balance trainer who actually fixes the problem. Uh, but the last one I want to touch upon as well is stuffed dogs, guys. Okay, again, this is something that positive only trainers or false free trainers, whatever you want to call, love to use. They like to bring a stuffed dog that if a dog's got reactivity to do some work around. Okay, uh, and it's insane. It really is. If your trainer brings a stuffed dog with them to a training session to help your dog. Tell them to leave and ask for your money back, right? Because dogs are not idiots, they're not. Yeah, if a dog will know the difference between a stuffed dog. My Staffy, for instance, loves a stuffed toy. So does my Terrier. Their mission in life is to devour those stuffed toys. Pull all the stuffing out, the eyes off, everything. Yeah, so by this notion, you could be labelling my dogs as aggressive. Even though my dogs actually help hundreds of aggressive dogs. They've helped hundreds and hundreds of dogs. Yeah, because they're not aggressive towards dogs. <laughs> they might be aggressive towards a stuffed toy. <clears throat> it's a stuffed fucking toy. Ooh, sounds like some uh, out of control dog. Barking, barking, barking. No owner. Oh, it's in another dog. It's a fox terrier charge. Oh, it's a cat, sorry, not another dog. 
uh, but this fox terrier barking, of course no owner in sight to tell the dog to stop, they're just going to probably wait until it stops barking and then give it a treat. Okay, but yeah, dogs know the difference between a living dog and a stuffed dog, uh, and you're not helping the owner, getting the owner used to walking past a stuffed dog, yeah, that's not going to help them at all because the second they're around a real life dog that moves, that reacts, that barks, you're setting them up for failure, guys, and you're just a complete idiot. If you bring a stuffed dog to a training session to help someone with a reactive dog, you shouldn't be in this business at all. Stuffed dogs are for CPR, health and safety courses, to teach people to bandage them, to teach people to practice medicine and stuff like that. It's not for dog training. It's not. Yeah. Uh, this one's just brought up uh, the fox terrier to my left. Having a good old bark. Uh, again, it's brought up another point that they do. When a dog bark, don't tell them no. Don't have a go at them don't correct them yeah they tell you to wait for the dog to stop barking and give it a treat dog barks wait for it to stop give it a treat I'm teaching a dog every time I bark I get a treat yeah these really are this simple guys they're trying to make the dog's life easy and stress-free but they're actually encouraging the behaviors this is why when I deal with dogs that have gone to these trainers they're mainly anxious cases over excitable dogs uh, that don't listen at all and telling your dog thank you when it barks and going to check at the window or at the fence or whatever it's barked at. Guys, come on. Seriously. Use your head. Yeah. Thank you. And then go and say what the dog... Again, every time a dog barks and you go towards the window, you say this dog barking, it's going to get you to go towards the window as well. It's, it's insane, guys. The reason that these training ideologies and these trainers are failing people everywhere and then when their res results aren't happening what they'll say is right we need to medicate your dog to calm it down uh, or some will even go as far uh, there's a local trainer that recommends dogs have been put to sleep and luckily they're still alive uh, because the methods are failing yeah some will even go as far to say the dog needs to be put to sleep uh, the reality is this simple guys all those behaviors that I mentioned right correct the dog pop it on a lead, give it a sharp snap on the lead, tell it no, tell it enough. When the dog then doesn't do that behavior or offers an alternative behavior, reward it, yeah? Because the definition of positive reinforcement is to add something positive in order to increase a behavior, yeah? So if a dog's mouthing you and then you add a treat to try and distract the dog or wait for the dog to let go, yeah, you're conditioning that behavior. But if the dog puts its mouth on you, Right, and you just push down on its tongue, making it a little bit unpleasant, and the dog backs away, then you can say, good, and give the dog a treat. Yeah, put your hand near the dog. If the dog doesn't mouth you, if the dog licks you, good, give the dog a treat. Yeah. If the dog counter surfs, have it on a long indoor training line. Again, if you've got dogs that have issues in the house, they should be on an indoor training line, gives you access to control. Pop on the lead, dog backs away. Next time, dog goes near the side. If it's size, just to look but don't jump, yes, give the dog a treat, yeah, if the dog jumps up, stick out your knee, I don't, and I'm not, under any circumstances saying, knee the dog, or kick the dog, yeah, but a dog jumps up, knee out, dog jumps into your knee, becomes a little bit unpleasant, yeah, you got to understand that all these behaviours that we're talking about, jumping up, mouthing, things like this, these are very unpleasant for the humans, we shouldn't have to endure these, so a dog jumps up, hits your knee, then the dog comes back over, decides to actually sit instead of jumping up because jumping up didn't get the desired effect. Then you give the dog a treat. Yeah, Positive reinforcement is only to add something to encourage a behaviour or you use it to teach an alternative or a new behaviour. Okay, But it does not and will not ever remove existing unwanted negative behaviours. The only way to do that is to create a negative association. Yeah, So if the dog mouths you, stops mouthing, gets a treat. Yeah, Or you distract the dog what happens is you haven't removed the mouthing you're hoping the dog's going to offer you something different yeah the only way to remove negative and unwanted behaviors to create a negative association to me is that simple then you use positive reinforcement to teach an alternative behavior so now the dog's got a clear choice if i do this there's a consequence if i do it a certain way there's a positive consequence do it another way there's a neg excuse me a negative consequence yeah Please just be, we need to use a little bit of common sense, guys. There's a reason that these trainers are not posting videos of their work. They're all good at talk. Uh, on paper, they sound brilliant, yeah? Who wouldn't want to fix their dog with freaking tea and biscuits? Who wouldn't, yeah? But they are con artists, yeah? There's a reason balanced trainers post video after video after video showing 
their work, showing the positive stuff, showing the negative stuff, yeah? And there's a reason that positive reinforcement trainers don't show it, they just tell you. And the other thing is, most of these positive reinforcement dog trainers, they only work with puppies or easy dogs, yeah? And the ones that they can't fix because they've got a little bit of drive or a little bit of freaking tenacity in them, what happens is then they recommend their dog be put to sleep and or medicate the dog. Yeah, it's insane, yeah? Jumping up could effectively have the dog destroyed. Mouthing could effectively have the dog destroyed. These are all things that are dangerous and you want to stop them. Counter surfing could eventually lead the dog with you with a hefty vet bill and the dog potentially in a life threatening situation. Yeah. To stop a dog doing something that is undesired and or dangerous to you, to others or to itself, you have to correct the dog. I'm sorry. Anyone that says they don't, they're a fucking idiot. Correct the dog. When the dog does something you like, that is desired, that you want them to continue to do, you reinforce it positively, yeah? They are that black and white, guys. It really is that simple. But to try and fix a dog using just one of the four quadrants is insane, yeah? To tell people that dogs don't ever need correcting is insane. And most of the time, when they're trying to fix dogs with their positive methods, what they're doing is they're just reinforcing the behavior, yeah? Time and time and time again, I go to clients' houses, who was your previous trainer? Within 30 seconds, no, it's a full three trainer. And guess what, guys? The dog is no better off. Yeah, if anything, it's made worse. Recently worked with a Spanish Mastiff, had the trainer in, every time the dog barked, they removed it from the room because they refused to correct it. They made that dog 10 times worse. Even the owner said they feel like ever since I was working with this trainer, who is a positive only trainer, uh, a full three trainer, whatever they want to call themselves, fairy tale dog trainers, tea and biscuit dog trainers, every time this dog was shut out, it was getting more and more afraid. They made that dog worse because they refused to correct it and tell it no. And this is a common occurrence. Corrections have a part in dog training. They do. All right? This black and white. Dog does something you like, you reward it. Dog does something you don't like, correct it. Yeah? Do not try to trick a dog. Okay? Do not reward behaviours by using positive methods that you don't actually want. Okay? So that's all I wanted to chat about guys, feel free to share this and please while you've just watched this just quickly scroll down and hit that like button. As always we appreciate it and I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll talk to you soon.